Howdy hi Thrill Seekers. One of my frequently asked questions goes something like this. Uh, the person will say, I've become interested in Zen from watching your videos or reading your books, thank you. And I want to practice, but in my area the only temple or the only practice space is a Korean Sun temple or a, a Chinese Chan temple or maybe a Zen center but it's in the Rinzai tradition so I'm gonna see what I can say about all that so uh, the entire history of Zen is really complicated and the best book I know that uh, that gives the whole history of, of the Zen tradition is this one this came out to what two years ago yeah three years ago uh, by Barbara O'Brien. It's a really good readable study of the entire history of Zen. I am not going to try to give you the entire history of Zen here. But Zen is a specific sect within Buddhism. Dogen, by the way, rejected the term Zen. He said that uh, calling it the Zen sect was an insult and, and that there is only Buddhism. Uh, but he was very adamant that his lineage of Buddhism was the only true lineage of Buddhism. And that would be what most people identify as the Soto uh, tradition within Zen, so that even a narrower thing. So it's Buddhism and then Zen within Buddhism and then Soto and Rinzai within Zen. Uh, and as far as Korean Son and Chinese Chan, here's what I know, which isn't a whole lot. I uh, have never really deeply studied either of them, but I have gone to a number of uh, Korean temples. Uh, usually uh, they are run by non-Korean people who are, these are in America, who are part of the Korean tradition, whose teachers were probably Korean, but, uh, but are, are, you know, second or third generation from that. So I visited a few of those. And here's what I can tell you. The most famous of the Korean Zen masters to Americans is this guy, uh, Sung San. And this is, uh, I think this is his most famous book, uh, Compass of Zen. There's a, there's a few other books by him. I like this book, uh, so it, it's pretty good. There are uh, two traditions, as far as I, the, as I say this, remember that I'm not the expert on this. But as far as I understand, there's sort of two streams within uh, mainstreams within Korean Zen and the difference between them has to do with their responses to Japan so the history between Japan and Korea is very interesting and sometimes not so pleasant the Japanese conquered Korea in the early uh, 20th century and up until the end of World War II they maintained a, a presence in Korea and they were pretty bad uh, one of the things that they did is they tried to force Japanese culture on Korea. And one of the results of this happened uh, to kind of come up in my job. When I worked for Tsuburaya Productions in Japan, we made a show called Ultraman. Ultraman was not a cartoon, it was a live action show with one caveat that I'm going to talk about. And I remember we got an inquiry from some company in Korea about one of our shows, and my boss said, oh, no, we won't be able to sell it there. I'm like, why not? He said, well, you can't show Japanese faces on Korean TV. That's how he presented it. And he said, you know, you couldn't tell a Japanese face from a Korean face anyway. This is a Japanese guy telling me, but you couldn't do it. Well, it's not the faces, actually, that is the, is the thing that's problematic. It's at the time, this is the 1990s, you could not show ev aspects of Japanese culture uh, on uh, Korean TV. So if there were, if in the TV, in the show, there were tatami mats on the floors, which is a kind of a very uh, specific Japanese kind of flooring thing. Uh, you couldn't show it if there was Japanese writing, you know, on the walls or whatever. Uh, you couldn't show that. And anyway, a show that was a live action show shot in Japan was basically not going to work. There was one program we had that we could sell to Korea, which was The Ultraman. It was a 1979 series. It was the only Ultraman series uh, that was uh, made as an animated product. All the other ones are live action. There are a couple other one-off animated things, and there's Ultraman Kids if you really want to get uh, you know, specific about it. But uh, we, could show, we could sell this in Ultraman Kids, and that's all we could sell. So uh, how this relates to Zen is... 
that the Japanese Buddhist tradition, all of the Buddhisms in Japan, in the Meiji Restoration era, which, era, which was the 1860s, decided to do away with the rule of celibacy. And so Japanese monks, Zen monks, and all other Buddhist order monks could marry from then on. Uh, and they didn't have to be celibate otherwise. So from my understanding, one of the major Korean Zen lineages, or Son is how they pronounce the character, uh, which is uh, the character for Zen is a single Chinese character, which is pronounced Zen in Japan, Son in uh, Korea, and Chan in, in Mandarin Chinese. So the, the one uh, Korean Son lineage chose to keep the Japanese style even after the Japanese occupation ended so they could marry and not be celibate and the other one chose to go back to the older tradition of celibacy. That, that's that's the main difference but I don't know which is which and, and every time I have a friend Vince who's in Detroit who's a, who runs a, a Korean style Zen temple, Son temple in Detroit and I've asked him about half a dozen times to explain to me which lineage is which and I, I never know but I know he's from the married lineage because he's married. Anyway, so that's the deal there. The major differences I saw when I went to Korean style Zen centers, they, they, they often call themselves just Zen because the word Zen is more well known in, in the United States and Europe. Uh, but when I've gone to Korean style Zen centers, the main differences were uh, bowing and chanting. So they have a tradition in Korean Zen of every morning doing 108 full prostrations. And a full prostration, uh, let me see if I can show you. Full prostration is like this. You bow, then you get down on your knees, and you go all the way down, uh, and you put your head on the floor and raise your hands up. You probably lost me there for, for a second when I did that. So in a lot of Korean Zen temples, every morning the, the Sangha, the group, gets together and does 108 of those, and it's, it's a workout. Uh, I actually kind of liked it because it was such a workout, you know, it was kind of neat. Uh, but uh, you're tired after that and your muscles are achy and your legs are, are, are achy. Uh, the other thing that they do is what they call a bell chant, which is, uh, it's, it's quite similar to the Japanese style chanting services, although it's much longer usually. A Japanese style Zen chanting service is usually over within about 20 minutes at least in, in most of the places. I, I, I know there are longer versions, but 20 minutes tends to be the, the norm. Uh, but the, the Korean uh, Zen temples, when they do the bell chants, those bell chants can last like an hour and a half of, of just different chanting. And they also chant in a, a sing-songy voice. So Japanese chanting goes, Kanji Zaibo Satsugyo Jin Amitaji, in one note. Whereas the Korean one, I don't know any Korean, so I'll just chant Japanese, but in Korean style, it's like kanji zai bo satsu gyojin hanya hara bita ji shokenga. You know, they do they do it in a they do notes, and and I, I don't know what the melody is, so I'm always just kind of struggling to follow along. And and as far as practice goes, the 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 style of Zen in the Korean traditions that I've sat in tends to be a little bit closer to Japanese rinzai. Uh, it seems like most of the places I've gone sit facing away from the wall. We in Soto sit facing toward the wall. I might be wrong about that. I'm thinking maybe the one I sat with in, uh, in L.A. sat facing toward the wall. It, anyway, the other, but, but the style of Zazen, you're basically doing the Shikan Taza style of just sitting, except they also use a koans. So they'll, they'll give you a koan and ask you to answer it to the teacher, but my impression of how it works in the in the Korean style is it tends to be a little um, softer uh, in the Korean style the way they do the the uh, the koan stuff. the The Japanese style Zen koan stuff in the Rinzai tradition tends to be kind of macho, you know. And there's this kind of like I'm gonna answer the koan, and you're you're working really hard on it, and then you present it to the teacher, and there's a lot of shouting and stuff. And what I've seen from Korean styles and using the koans is it's more like a, a discussion topic. It's, that's what it seems to be to me. If you're an expert on Korean styles and you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. 
but what it seems to me is they just kind of go in and sit together sort of the way we do in Soto style which is it's called dokusan when you meet the teacher in a Soto style dokusan what you normally do is you just uh, sit there and have a chat with the teacher in a, a, a Rinzai style you're supposed to answer your koan and it's called sanzen and you meet with the teacher to do that the Korean style of using koans seem to be seem to me to be closer to the uh, the way I do uh, dokusan, which is I just chat with the person, but they happen to have the, the in the Korean style, they happen to have the koan as the topic that they're going to talk about. That's my impression. Uh, so th there you go with that. As far as Chinese chan, I, I can't say much about that. I've never practiced in a Chinese chan temple. I've, I've never been invited to one. There are a few dotted around the country. My guess, and, and remember that I'm guessing here, is that they're probably descended from lineages from Taiwan and Hong Kong rather than lineages from mainland China. Because in mainland China, of course, you had Chairman Mao and the Cultural Revolution that happened in the mid-20th century. Uh, and this was communist, so they believed that religion was bad, so they suppressed religion. And I think things have changed a little bit in mainland China, so it's a little bit freer to practice religions, but, but Zen was included in that. So they, the, uh, I don't know that there are any unbroken mainland Chinese Zen lineages anymore. I think uh, the, that stuff that happened with the, uh, the Cultural Revolution sort of broke the lineages because people weren't allowed to practice for like, I don't know, 50 odd years or something like that. Uh, and, and they're only just now kind of uh, getting it back together. So I don't know much about that. I would assume it's probably mostly Rinzai style. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, Rinzai style. Uh, what I know about Rinzai style mostly comes from visiting temples in the Sasaki Roshi lineage, which is, of course, I have to always say this, problematic these days because uh, Sasaki Roshi did some stuff and there's some accusations and, and whatnot. But I think that uh, as far as practice is concerned, what I saw in the Sasaki Roshi lineages was fairly typical of, of Rinzai. They sit facing the, the center of the room. They do koan practice, and, and they do it usually in a kind of macho style. The Sasaki lineage, uh, they tended not to use the traditional books, the Mumonkan or Gateless Gate, as their koans. Sasaki Roshi himself would make up koans, which is kind of unusual. Uh, there's usually a, a kind of a set, a bunch of koans that uh, that people work from. In, in fact, there's a book that I have somewhere called One Hand Clapping that gives you the answers to all the koans. Then the other one uh, that's uh, very active is Sambo, Sambo Kyodan, which uh, is uh, mostly descended from Maizumi Roshi, who is out here in Los Angeles. Uh, I, he passed away, I think, in the 80s. Uh, so uh, but his descendants are still around there. Uh, Genpo Roshi is one of them who I've talked about a lot. But they try to combine Soto and Rinzai. But, but to my eyes, from what I've seen, they're much more Rinzai. In fact, they're, they're more like stereotypical Rinzai to me than the Sasaki Roshi's li Rinzai lineages. Uh, they, they really get into the koans. I remember one time I was living in a, a center, a, a a place in Santa Monica that was used as a multi sort of disciplinary Buddhist center for other groups, not even just Buddhist groups, but meditation groups. Anyway, one day the uh, Sambo Kyodan, local Sambo Kyodan group was in there and I was trying to go to sleep because I was, I was had to get up early the next morning and the, the, but they were still going strong at about nine o'clock at night in the room next to me shouting, Moo! Moo! So like every few minutes another person would come in and scream, Moo! at the at the uh, teacher there and I, I I thought the whole thing seemed a bit theatrical and silly but um, hand was it was interrupting my ability to sleep so I wasn't really happy about it but that's what you get now as far as what you should do you know uh, you know whether you should go to one of these places I don't think it breaks down into Soto good everything else bad uh, I, I doesn't you know that 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 would be silly and I, I feel like whatever tradition somebody is practicing in it's really up to the the, the teacher and the the group and the and the sincerity of those people as to whether it's going to be a good place or not I 
have been sorely disappointed, and I don't even want to go into the details, with Soto Zen Buddhism in America lately. And I feel like, I don't know if there's any Soto Zen Buddhist place in America that I could recommend without any reservations. There's always something that I, I see going on in one of those places and I go, oh, I don't know about that. But that being said, most of them aren't bad. I'm not saying they're bad or awful. You know, I'm just saying I have some reservations about most of them. So, so it's not even like I can say, oh yeah, if it's a Soto temple, go there, that'll be great. Uh, maybe not. I've seen some Rinzai teachers that are, that are very impressive. Some of my best friends are Rinzai Buddhists, Rinzai Zen Buddhists. And uh, so, so I think there's places in the Rinzai, Rinzai style that I would recommend more than I'd recommend your most of the Soto places. It's probably in Korean Zen tradition too that I would recommend more than some of the Soto places I know of. It's, it's, it even gets to, if you find a really sincere Catholic priest or, or, or Muslim, I think they're called imam, imams? Anyway, a Muslim teacher, you know, or, or something like that. I, I've met Sufi teachers who are Muslim who I think are... are greater than a lot of the the uh, Soto teachers I've run into. Uh, it, it, it comes down to whatever religion you have, it's always an individual religion. Every religion is an individual religion. There can be two people who sit next to each other every Sunday in this, you know, right in the same pew, in the same church for 40 years. Both of them say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And if you really quiz them about it, you would find that they each have a, a different interpretation of what Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior means. That's, that's how individualistic it is. So I don't think you can cut it along sectarian lines and say, you know, this one's okay and this one's not. You really, every time somebody asks me this question, I end up giving them a lot of information and, and probably overwhelming them sometimes with information if I feel like typing that day and then telling them in the end, you just got to go and see what the place is like. You know, just go and see and sit with them a, a little while and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, leave. I don't know of any Zen group that's culty in the sense that they're going to, uh, you know, try to track you down. If you, I mean, in my case, let me, let me tell you what happens. I, I see all the time people come once, twice, ten times over a whole year and then just stop showing up. That happens all the time, and I just think, okay, that guy's gone. You know, I, I never even bother to, to check on him or anything. I, I, don't, I don't try to trace him down and bring him back into the cult or any of that. I just let him go. You know, that's just how it goes. I think every other Zen center I know of or Chan center or Sun center has the same policy. They just kind of, like, if you show up, fine. If you, if you don't like it, you leave, and there's no harm, no foul. You're just gone. So uh, that's why I encourage you to just go check it out. Even if you stay there a month or two or a year, uh, you can still just stop going and, and probably nobody will even, you know, they'll just figure you're, you're one of those people who just stopped coming. It just happens. So uh, I wouldn't worry about uh, that you're going to make, you're going to be involved in any sort of commitment just by going and checking it out. So go check it out and see what you think of it. That's it. That's, uh, that's what I know about those lineages, and I would uh, again recommend this book, Circle of the Way, if you really want to know the nitty-gritty of, of the different Zen lineages and why they're different and how they, how they became different. I'm not getting any um, payback from uh, Barbara O'Brien, although I do email with her sometimes. Um, I, I just think she wrote a really good book. So uh, that's it. And uh, if you want to donate to me, uh, you will see a URL down at the bottom of the screen. It is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That's right, hardcorezen, sorry, hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main ways of making a living these days. And I really, really appreciate your support. It's fallen off a little bit in the last couple of weeks, so I don't know what happened there. But uh, I do appreciate your support, those of you who keep uh, donating, and thank you very much. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to donate. If you don't want to donate, I'll be okay. And we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bizels. Get that ball. I'm gonna get that ball. I'm gonna get that ball. Let me have that ball. Let me have that ball. I'm gonna get that ball. I'm gonna get the 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 ball.